Exactly two weeks to the dawn of a new year, New Central begins a series of special reports that will look at events that shaped the year 2023. Today, correspondent Niyo Monie reviews the ups and downs recorded in the country's judiciary within the year. His reports. In January 2023, the Independence Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission announced that 52 ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government failed to respond to an integrity compliance assessment in 2022, resulting in a high corruption risk designation. These included the Supreme Court of Nigeria, Court of Appeal of Nigeria, and National Judicial Institute. With these reports coming at the beginning of the year, it served as a pointer to probable need for probe into the financial dealing of the judiciary. Despite that, the Nigerian judiciary experienced both accomplishment and challenges in 2023. Positively, the Nigerian judiciary maintained seeming independence in important election judgment despite increased scrutiny. However, concerns remained that political influence sometimes interfered with its work. One notable issue came to light through comments by Adamu Balkachua, who represented Bauchi North Senatorial District in the Senate. Particularly my wife, whose freedom and independence I encroached upon while she was in office. His wife, former president of the Court of Appeal, Justice Zaina Balkachua, as one of a rose appoints judges to election tribunals. These raised questions regarding our impartiality. This revelation is not good omen for our judicial uh, 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 setup in Nigeria. It doesn't give a, some level of confidence, even you know, with, from the from the members of the public. There have also been questions regarding potential dissenting views of the rule of law and concerns about double standards or disregard for the rule of law by government bodies. This is evidenced by recent High Court pronouncements in prominent political cases such as Lawan v. Machina and Gutswil Akmabio v. Independent National Electoral Commission and others. In these judgments, the court endorsed Gutswil Akmabio and Ahmed Lawan as candidates despite their inability to participate in their party's primaries while contesting presidential primaries. Section 115, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act provides a two-year jail term for anyone who participates in two elections in the same election year. Another potentially controversial trial involves the former head of Nigeria's central bank, Godwin Emefiele, among others. So when you have this kind of dichotomy, it creates unease, it creates division, it creates resentment within the country that there are some people who can disobey the law because they are scapegoats and there are those who cannot. And so that is not a good thing. Although implemented to an extent, the partial financial autonomy the judiciary enjoys has been identified as a weak line by which the executive has held the judiciary like a leash. There have been allegations of budgetary allocations to the Nigerian judiciary being shrouded in secrecy despite public outcry. Not only are Nigerians denied access to the judiciary budget, its income and expenditure are also kept a secret. In December 2020, the ICPC said that the judicial sector led the Nigeria Corruption Index between 2018 and 2019, with over 9 billion naira offered and paid as bribes by lawyers to judges, especially those handling high electoral or other political cases. But the Chief Justice is not without blemish in the eyes of his colleague on the bench. It's obvious that the judiciary I'm exiting from is far from the one I voluntarily joined and desired to serve and be identified with. The institution has become something else. Such is that of Justice Musa Datijo, who recently accused the nation's Chief Justice of various infractions including abuse of power and improper accounting for funds. In a society where merit takes second seat and the favoritism and the nepotism is, is uh, what is used to appoint, you know, uh, judges and competence in itself is relegated, we are bound to have situations like this. And then we'll talk about it, we'll fantasize and romanticize about it until the next happens.
More recent nominations of new justices for the Apex Court seems to address some of the anomalies identified by Justice Datijo. The Supreme Court is expected to uphold the strongest standard of integrity and impartiality. However, the pervasive corruption suggests a need for judicial reforms from within to strengthen the transparency and accountability across the branch. As an independent entity, the judiciary faces the challenging task of overseeing its own self-governance and improvement. Nigerian people will be able to see clearly that what is meant to be the last hope of the common man is completely hopeless in giving any hope to the common man. Whatever I might have had to say, I believe Justice Datijo said everything eloquently. In the discharge of our professional endeavors. The new Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagbemi, has barely spent five months in office, so it will be too early to fully assess his impact. While his reputation is not yet tarnished like some of those who previously held the office, only time will tell his influence on Nigeria's judiciary. The average Nigerian perceives the judicial system as serving certain interests over the law. As integrity, trust and professionalism seem lost, Nigeria risks further instability without restoring confidence in the legal system and rule of law. Upholding the integrity of courts is critical to prevent additional erosion of stability and justice in Nigeria. Ni Omani, reporting for New Central Lagos.